it's a shock. It's when you hear MS, you kind of, you think all the worst things and everyone's journey with MS is so different. Let's start at the beginning. How'd you two meet? We actually grew up together. TJ started playing hockey in the town that I lived in, and that was just kind of where everyone hung out when we were kids. And yeah, so we started to get to know each other then, but we didn't start dating until our early 20s. It was long distance. I was off playing hockey, and then, you know, obviously in the summer, we got to spend some time together and get to know each other, and then, you know, I just went from there. I was playing hockey, checking out the crowd. I see this little blonde girl walk in. I couldn't really see her. I had to wait till she got up a couple rows, and then I seen her. <laughs> Get the stick. So Amber, what were the first signs that you had multiple sclerosis? Probably about a year after TJ and I started dating. My first symptom, I started losing vision and I was told it was optic neuritis, which essentially is inflammation of the optic nerve. It was super weird and super scary and you didn't really know what it was, but I was told that it was the first sign in women my age of MS. So obviously it, it was shocking. This lasted for about a month or two and then I almost fully recovered from that but then about a year later I lost feeling from my waist down for about a month. Since then it, it was kind of like okay what do we do next and the next step was the MRI which then showed spots on my brain and spinal cord and that's when they could officially diagnose me. That's what I struggle with the most with the disease is the unknown, the uncertainty, the especially now having children. It wasn't necessarily the having kids part, it was the, am I gonna be able to take care of them forever part. That was the scariest. It's day by day. For me, it was obviously scary not being able to help. And the only way I can help is emotionally, which I'm already not good at. <laughs> and then when she was officially diagnosed, I was on the road, so. You know, you can't really do much through a telephone or FaceTime. So yeah. it, it, it was a tough time. I think that's the hard part about the lifestyle that we live is what, like everyone's dealing with their own stuff in their lives, but these guys got to go out and perform that night and you have no idea what's going on at home or what they're thinking about. And yeah, I think that was a difficult day. When you started getting symptoms, did you go through a bit of a Google rabbit hole? Of course. Yeah, I think just like anybody, it's it's um, it's a shock. It's when you hear MS, you kind of, you think all the worst things and everyone's journey with MS is so different. So that's the, I think the biggest struggle is you kind of have one perception about what it's gonna look like for you and that's not necessarily the case. We started trying to eat healthier. I feel like you're way more in tune with your body since it's happened. Yes, which sometimes is like a, a good thing and a bad thing. I feel like every little thing I'm very aware of feeling wise. I have changed different lifestyle habits. I definitely follow a more anti-inflammatory diet and super active. When we lived in Calgary, I did a lot of cryotherapy, which just helps with inflammation. And now we actually have a cold tub, which has been super helpful. It's not the most enjoyable thing to do. <laughs> Who's tougher in the cold tub? I am, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what, if anything, do you want people to learn from your story? I just think definitely that you're not alone, that there's so much support, especially through MS Canada, there's so much information out there and there's so much su support through all their resources and that there is life on the other side of your diagnosis. I'd always done stuff with cystic fibrosis and after she was diagnosed with MS, we wanted a way to be able to contribute to both. We started a pickleball tournament to raise money and then a and approached us to do the uh, Burgers to Beat MS. Yeah. You know, it's always nice to give back to the community. You know, any little thing I can do, you know, I want to. Yeah. Oh, all of a sudden he knows how to do a selfie. The long, the long wins help. <laughs> Thanks so much. We generally talk about athletes and their families' legacy in a binary way based off of, you know, individual accolades and team success. Well, your family's legacy now is going to be much bigger than that. It's what you do for the community in Canada, specifically struggling with MS. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for letting us share. <laughs>